Okay, so first, um, first thing we do in an annual business meeting is we, is we uh, call the meeting to order. So can I have a motion to call the meeting to order? All right, and seconded. All right, all in favor. Here we go. Here we go. All right, motion carries. Um, would uh, one of us like to uh, run a roll call to, uh, to pick up the states? Yes. Yes, great. Alabama. And if the people are virtual, if they could um, acknowledge it, turn their microphone on and acknowledge it, that would be helpful. Here. Alaska. Present. Arizona. Here. Arkansas. Here. California. Colorado. Connecticut. Delaware. District of Columbia. Florida. Georgia. Hawaii, Idaho, Here. Illinois, Here. Indiana, Here. Iowa, Here. Kansas, Here. Kentucky, Louisiana, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, Here. Michigan, Here. Minnesota, Mississippi, Here. Missouri, Here. Montana, Here. Nebraska, Nevada. Here. New Hampshire. New Jersey. Here. New Mexico. Here. New York. Here. North Carolina. North Dakota. Here. Ohio. Oklahoma, Oregon, Pennsylvania, here. Rhode Island, here. South Carolina, South Dakota, Tennessee, here. Texas, Utah, Here. Vermont, Virginia, Washington, Here. West Virginia, Wisconsin, Wyoming. Also Minnesota is here. Thank you, and for anyone uh, virtual, uh, if there was a mute problem or we didn't hear you, um, would you uh, go ahead and sound off now with your state? All right, hearing none. Thank you, Mary. Our next order of business is approval of the 2020 annual uh, business meeting minutes. Um, and I presume there was a, a link uh, those are online uh, if anyone has um, uh, uh, comments about those we'll take those after we have a motion to approve can i have a motion to approve the minutes and then we can discuss all right and second okay very good any discussion on the minutes online anyone all right 
Um, and we'll take a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Okay. I'll take those as all in favor. It's great. Thank you. All right. So uh, per our bylaws, some of that rigor is necessary um, and it provides uh, a forum. Um, now we'll go into officer's reports and I will um, start with maybe a little bit of a, uh, a little philosophical spin on the officer's report for the president's report. And, you know, I've been thinking quite a bit about kind of the North Stars. Like what are those guiding principles that, that um, have helped me figure out what are the right things to do in the directions to head? And where did they come from? You know, and so I got thinking about that and, and um, uh, this is a, a, a couple of photos I wanted to share with you. I'm, uh, I'm second in line there. Um, there's, there's Frankie at four years old. And this was the ice cream parade. My grandfather on camping trips would line up all of the kids in the family and cousins, but they'd also line up everyone in the campground in height order. And every day he'd march us up to the ice cream shop. And it was all about the structure and connecting with people. And it was just really cool thing that, that he did. And camping for everyone involved was like, wow, this was different, that was cool. But my mom, uh, picture there, not many pictures of us camping. <laughs> we were too busy. But my mom had an interesting, interesting lesson for us. She said, you always leave the campsite better than you found it. And that just became part of what we did. And as little kids, we had a contest for how much little pieces of litter or whatever we could pick up um, as we left the campsite. But then she took that a step further and said, you leave a courtesy pile of firewood. And I was like, wow, why do we do that? And she's like, well, picture... And she was really teaching empathy. Picture people that are going to show up who are going to use this campsite next. And maybe they got lost on the way here or they had a flat tire and they got here late and it's after dark and they want to cook their hot dogs and the kids are tired and hungry. And they're going to go, oh, somebody left us firewood and we can make our hot dogs. So we're leaving something better than we found it in a sense of stewardship, which gave us really a great feeling about it. And we enjoyed doing that. We, we made killer courtesy piles. It was, it was wonderful. And we did that for people that we're never going to meet. Right, so I'm thinking about how this relates to some of the activities and some of the thoughts around NISJIC and the people who we are not even gonna meet that we're touching their lives, right? Whether they're getting their work of government done or whether they're people just using their smartphone to go find the pizza shop, right? It's that sense of stewardship that we're leaving the world better than we found it. So I've posed this question before, I'll repeat it. Is the world a better place because you're part of it? Stop and think about that. For everyone in this room and everyone online, it's an unequivocal yes, because you're here conferring with one another, trying to work on issues that happen on the surface of the earth. But what do we put in place? What structures do we put in place to maximize the extent to which that's true? So that's been kind of the thoughts rattling around in my head when it comes to our committees and our work and our strategic looking over the horizon, right? So uh, I wanna talk about the work and our, our keynote was a really great example. So if I work on my desk and I do my best work, I've got a multiplier of one, one Frankie cranking away, right? If now I, I empower my team, I've got two, three, four, 30 people, right? But now I work with my NISJIC community and, and um, we're, we're sharing ideas and now I'm impacting uh, maybe a hundred, maybe a couple hundred people. But now I work with our sponsors and our partners and the addresses flow to users of smartphones and, and people are safer on the highways using mass market devices and now we're hitting all of our citizenry. Now we're, now we're hitting millions of people with our efforts. And now further impacting our scale, we look over the horizon and we set things in motion that where this is gonna last in perpetuity. Now we've got multi-millions of, of impacts. That's where our impact really is, is scaling. And guess what, it's happening. So that's a big part of my president's report is that we are impacting millions of people. You're gonna hear um, uh, in, a, in a session with, um, with Google and USDOT, you're gonna hear of the impact that our citizens are getting just through that one, that one effort as one of many examples. Um, you're gonna hear about um, how we're changing the face of managing a pandemic. And it's not just that it's our GIS geeks coming up with an idea and it's in our club and, and it hasn't, the, the message hasn't left the choir. We're gonna have people join us from the major public health not-for-profit organizations, right? We're also going to, um, to uh, hear, and in fact, right now is the time to do this, 
uh, we're going to hear about our deliberate collaboration with the Open Geospatial Consortium. And we have an MOU that we've worked out with OGC to share information, amplify each other's messages, and go to each other's meetings and work together. Um, so do we have Nadine uh, on, the, on the video? Nadine Alame? Can you see yes. me? Yes. Got your <laughs> pen ready, Nadine? Ooh. All right, Molly, would you like to come on up and uh, let's, let's sign an MOU with OGC. What do you say? The executive directors of our organizations are agreeing to work together. You've got your pen, where you go? Hey, Nadine. Hello. <laughs> Finding the line here. All right. This is so exciting. And Nadine, we're really, really looking forward to continuing to build on the work that we've been doing this past year or 18 months. Sure. And um, I'm doing my part here. All right, I'll do mine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Virtual signing. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. You can hold on to that copy. Yeah. <laughs> That's nice. Thank you. All right. One, one more uh, quick slide, and this is just uh, to wrap up my report. Um, something that really was, uh, Karen refreshed my memory from one of our, um, uh, one of our strategic summits, and uh, this was a graphic that uh, can you bump the slide for me one time? Let's see if I can do it. I don't know if my clicker's working. Could you advance one? So uh, NISGIC and our community really being the conductors of the geospatial symphony. Everyone has their expertise playing their instruments and doing their thing, but let's convene and conduct. And, and that MOU is just one piece of, of our role in doing that. So uh, to me, that's what the president's report for this uh, year is all about. All right, so with that, I would like to uh, bring up our esteemed president-elect, Jenna Levier. Thanks, Greg. I'm gonna try this one. Can you guys hear me? Yeah? Yeah. Right. So that was, that was actually perfect. Um, and and I, I wanna start with, I'm really glad you are all friends here. Oh, too far away. All right, I could scream, use my teacher voice. <laughs> so I was thinking about what I wanted to say today and I wanna to tell you a little bit about last year, right? My training year, that's how I think of it. Um, and I have kind of two themes, um, gratitude and opportunity. And I have a disclaimer. <laughs> and you guys will get used to this and maybe I'll stop. But for me, the things that matter make me cry. <laughs> so I'll just bear with me and that'll be part of this. So I think, you know, the obvious thing is today and us in this room. And I am so grateful that we have all of our friends from across the States that couldn't be here today. I think what's really important is that this would not have happened without the choices that Chris Diller and Shelby made five years ago. Molly has made such an impact on our community and the staff. There is so much more to a hybrid event than any of us want to know about. It, there's details that, that we really don't wanna get into, um, but it wouldn't work without it. And I'm grateful. And I'm grateful that you're all here. That, that makes a difference, right? So, you know, I think about the last time we were able to be in person and that was 18 months ago. And we were starting to talk about, well, we were talking about how we wanna impact. What more do we wanna do? What are we primed to do? More than two meetings in person, for sure. So I'm grateful that we started that conversation because when the pandemic hit and all of our minds were blown, oh my gosh, we're stuck at home, we were still connected. And we were still connected because of the hard work of the staff and all of your willingness to participate 
and to engage and to make a difference in a really difficult time. There were opportunities there that we never, we never knew, right? Not until we were faced with it. And this crowd is uniquely positioned to take advantage of those. None of us are, are afraid of hard work. Um, I'm really grateful for that. So in my training year, I have had more opportunity than I think people previously because the circumstances were different. We were more connected. There were more meetings. There were more opportunities for me to learn from all of you, to learn from Frank, to learn from Karen. It was, it's different than the people before me. So I'm really grateful. Um, you know, I was thinking about, our, we've already had amazing sessions, right? And this is supposedly day one, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, so in the, GIO, in the GIO Academy, we were talking about strategic planning and you know putting ourselves in the right spot. And there was a lot of learning going on, but one of the things that stuck with me was wins. We need to articulate our wins. And this group is winning in so many ways. Again, bear with me. So I can, I can point to many. Uh, one of the most obvious is here, right? We're all here. This is a big win. Um, GDA, GDA implementation and the coming together, we've had workshops on that, right? And the coming together of really brilliant people, that's a win. We're, we're going to change policy. We're going we're gonna to make a difference, right? That's an opportunity and something I'm incredibly grateful for. So, you know, the, the work that Frank and Tony have done on the Pandemic GIS Task Force, yeah, that's, that's profound and, and powerful. It brought our visibility as an industry up, and I'm grateful. That's, that's amazing. And that's a win, right? So all of our hard work with our strategic summits, that's been my opportunity to learn and my opportunity to articulate our wins as well as our opportunities, right? Um, I'm really looking forward to the next steps on that. And that's been hard to articulate. Um, so, so we have a lot of opportunities ahead. And in my training year, I feel like I'm ready. So, so that's exciting. And thank you all because I, can't do it without all of you in the room. So, so I'm grateful. And, you know, in the next few days, we have a lot of opportunities for both the folks online and the folks in the room. Sai is going to follow us up with a GDA implementation discussion. Um, he's the other thing that I'm super grateful for coming on to NISJIC. We're going to make a splash. That's good. Um, the opportunities with the NAD. And you know, I had a discussion with Leland this morning about resilience and climate and how we can make a difference there. So there's lots of opportunities ahead. And thankfully, you'll all be in the room with me, well, at least for the next year. So, so we'll get there. Thanks, guys. So Jenna, one comment in the in the uh, chat that I have to highlight, you can read the rest of them, is you are the real deal, Jenna. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right, so now it's time for our past president report. Thank you, Karen. You want this one? Do I? Okay, you got it. Thank you, Frank. So it is, uh, I think I said it was bittersweet last year when I passed the mug over to Frank. And here I am saying it's bittersweet yet again, because I just can't believe that the year has flown by. My three years have flown by. My sentence, maybe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I have, I have served my sentence, but um, truly it has just been an honor and a privilege. Like I cannot even begin to express, um, you know, because I get verklempt too. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
you know, as Frank again kicked off this morning, Nizhik is incredible because of you, because of the people, because of our relationships, because of our passion that we have for this, uh, you know, world changing technology and how we put it to use for the common good for the benefit of us all. And we all care about that. And I just, I can't tell you guys how much it means to me to be here with you and, and the, the honor and the privilege to have served as your president. And um, it has been just a huge, you know, I've, I've grown so much, I've learned so much, and it has just provided so many opportunities for my own development and, you know, for my professional network, yada, yada, but really just, you know, the, the deepening of myself and my commitment to what I do and my commitment to you guys. Um, and so, it, you know, it is, again, impactful to be here and see this leadership pipeline and know that when I first started, my first NIJIC was eight years ago. And at that time, there was this, like, crisis of leadership. We need people to come into this pipeline and start serving in leadership positions. And uh, Gene immediately looked at me and he was like, well, you're next. And I was like, what do you mean? I just got here. Um, and so here we are and our work has paid off and it's been a lot of work to get to where we are, but it is paying off because my God, the leadership pipeline that we have now is amazing. And I'm very proud of that and very impressed and uh, just, you know, sitting on the edge of my seat to see, well, on the edge of my ball, as you guys know, um, to see where it goes next. And, you know, both Frank and Jenna both shared with me this week, in the last few days, that I saw something in them that they didn't realize they had. And that's why, you know, they're here with me and have been with me. But you know, so again, it's just a way of paying it forward. And that's, you know, I hope you find a way to pay it forward and hope you consider, you know, those of you who are in that leadership pipeline, it, I jokingly say it is, a, you know, has been a sentence, but it is, it is easier now, thanks to Molly and our staff. It is not, it is not the grueling sentence that it used to be being president for three years. It is much more pleasant. And I mean, I'm leaving still wanting more. I want to know how I can give back. I want to know how I can choose to be engaged going forward because I want to keep finding ways to give back and have an impact. So speaking of which, my impact. Um, some of you may have heard about uh, the compendium and if you can advance my slide, please. So this is a really long story, but some of you um, have heard about or recall Bill Johnson's talking about early NISJIC and Lisa Warnicke, the mother of NISJIC, one of the mothers of NISJIC. And turns out that she worked in Wyoming as a budget analyst and she had spare time. And so she got to delve into her passion, which was uh, documenting GIS activities in states. And so she went around gathering a lot of information, a lot of information about how states were using GIS and working with NASA and so on and so on. And so she got a grant from National Council of State Legislatures to write a report. And this is the um, compendium, the, doc, the uh, State Geospatial Activities Compendium. And at some point it'll be pulled up. And so this has been, I mean, it was like a, a report, a paper document that you had to buy on Amazon and um, lots of information going back to org charts and, you know, again, how states were using GIS and what agencies, so on and so on. And so we worked with her and uh, State University of New York at the in College of Environmental Science and Forestry. And we got a copyright a waiver from NCSL to digitize the compendium. And I'm here to tell you that it's finally digitized, it's indexed, and we have um, a copy of it. We have paid them for that work, and we're working with Lisa to now scan additional documents in her tremendous library. So it's, it's, you know, again, it's paying it forward by learning from the past and being able to leverage these resources so that we don't recreate the wheel, so that we can build on what has been done before us and keep, you know, building that house um, Oh, interesting, Jamie, it's her alma mater. So um, 
so I'm really par proud that that's you know one part of my legacy, as as Jenna reminded me. It's only one part, um, but it but it is a, a gratifying part to have gotten that done and uh, know that it's there. And so we will be highlighting it on our website somewhere uh, once we get that worked out. But and there is more to come. So um, happy to report on that, and happy to um, really. It's the last year has been nice for me to kind of sit back and let these guys. Do their thing. So now I get to sit back even more. So thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. What you have to know about Karen's sitting back is like most people's run like hell, you know, so it's, it's kind of the way it is. It's awesome. Thank you, Karen. All right. Our next report will be um, Mark Holmes with the Treasurer's Report. All right, there we go. Uh, everyone can hear me? Yes. Okay. All right, excellent. So I'm going to take a few minutes here and just go through um, update with financials. Um, so just kind of an overview. So good news is similar to last year, NISDIC has a current and healthy financial status. Um, our revenue expenses are aligning with the 2021 budget expectations. Um, just a side note there, this year's budget actually had one adopted budget scenario with two contingencies, depending how things played out with the pandemic, uh, specifically the conferences, virtual versus in-person or hybrid. Um, so that was a little bit different this year. Um, and, uh, but everything, again, with that, uh, everything so far year to date are aligning with uh, the expectations of that budget. Then I've got listed out here, just the members of the finance committee. Um, so a big thanks to everybody that's participated through, uh, through the year there, helping monitor and move things along. So if we go off to the next slide here. All right, thank you. Um, so here on this particular uh, slide, really just showing the financial position uh, across the organization um, over the last year. So this looks at the end of August this year compared to the same time last year. Uh, I note here the daily operations cash flow caused some fluctuations between the two years. So depending what's happening within the uh, organization with uh, an example would be when program funding come in before the expenses are paid out. Um, some of that money may go into money market for a time being, or if things have to get pulled from reserves to pay different expenses. So we see a little bit of the you know, differences across the, the assets uh, within here. Um, but again, overall outlook of the financial position for the organization is uh, very healthy uh, year to date uh, up to the end of August. So off to the next slide. All right, so this one looks at um, just revenue goals uh, year to date. Um, versus budget. So again, as of end of August and comparing to um, uh, last year. Uh, oops, sorry, I didn't move ahead here. Okay, so again, we've achieved our budget goals with membership and sponsorship uh, showing on this slide here. Uh, again, which is great news because going into uh, the budget last fall, not knowing how the pandemic might impact um, you know, the organization from participation, and I mentioned the conferences. Um, so great news with our year to date uh, in terms of the membership and uh, sponsorships there. Uh, and then program disbursement. Uh, we continue to grow from a program's standpoint. Uh, and again, here the year to date um, it reflects just the end of August. There's additional funding planned to come in that we'll see that year of date uh, kick up, uh, tick up there. So then conferences, I mentioned the three budget scenarios that we adopted. Um, and how they ended up playing out. Uh, so the one we did choose was the one that played out. So virtual mid-year and the hybrid annual conference, which was great. We were able, as people have mentioned here, having the annual conference uh, in person, but also the hybrid option. Um, the good news, our conference registration is aligned with the budget, even a little bit uh, over budget there. But just a note though, that even though it's having a number of in attendees virtual, the expenses for those, the, the, the virtual side of things is similar to having everybody in person because of all the additional AV costs that go along uh, with that too. So um, good news that we are uh, um, from a revenue standpoint um, year to date meeting those. And then we'll start seeing here, if we look at the next slide, if we move to the next one, uh, from the expenses standpoint, 
Uh, those are on track as we go through the year here, again, with four months left. Um, we expect to be closer up to the, the budget of those uh, tick up. And one example is those conference expenses that typically come in and are recognized in October and then some of the program expenses that are still to occur through the rest of the year. So we move on to the last slide here, just to wrap things up. So really here, just again, just kind of um, last uh, um, kind of summary. Uh, the organization is very good financial standing as we go through uh, and near the end of 2021, uh, where our actuals have been aligning with budget, not just this year, but over the past few years. So again, a testament to all the, the work the NISJIC staff has been doing excellent work running their day-to-day -day operations and really having a finger on the pulse to you know, all of the, the operational standpoint. And then again, the finance committee uh, monitoring things on a monthly, on, excuse me, monthly basis. So um, we do meet on a monthly basis. We look at things. We also have quarterly meetings with our financial consultant and making sure we're following the investment policy for the reserve. And uh, 22 budget, 2022 budget planning uh, is set to begin next month. So that uh, leads into an approval by the board later on this year to adopt that for 2022. So uh, that's the wrap on the treasurer's report. And Frank, I'm handing it back to you, I think. Thank you very much, uh, Mark. Um, we, ha we have time for a question or two. Any questions? Check my chat. All right, hearing none, um, I would like to um, wrap up our officer's report with a thank you to Mary Fulton to, uh, as serving as our secretary for a year. Um, we didn't put you on the spot and have you make a report, but you're welcome to make a comment if you like, or you can just wave and say thanks. <laughs> awesome. Great. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. So the way this, uh, this meeting works is we run through our agenda until we get to our allotted time. We motion to suspend the meeting, and then we pick up the meeting um, in our second session on Thursday. So next, um, we have... Uh, Molly Shar with the executive director's report. And while Molly's making her way up, I just also want to express um, my gratitude for all the work that Molly and the team has done. So many organizations did not thrive the way we're thriving. And it's the hard work of, of you and the team, which I really appreciate. Thanks, Frank. Can everybody hear me in the back? Okay, yep. Everybody online. No, no thumbs up, <laughs> but we'll, we'll assume they can hear me. Um, good morning. It's great to be here. Um, truly, I think that that's something that um, we used to say and just take for granted, that it's great to be here, but it, it, it is great to literally be here in this physical spot, um, in this room with, with all of you and in the Zoom room, I think. Um, Gosh, in Albuquerque, I, I don't know that if you had told me this is what the next meeting would look like, I would have been able to wrap my head around it. But um, we're here and we're doing it. And I'm so grateful for all of you for coming and um, being part of this experiment. Um, and for the folks who are participating virtually, I know that that's its own special kind of challenge. Um, and so, you know, I just have so much appreciation for, for you, for being here, for hanging in there, um, and for really um, uh, participating in, in a way that um, didn't make this a one-way um, broadcast out. So go ahead for the next slide. So I will not uh, read this to you or expect you to read it. I know it's tiny print. Um, I did want to share just a few um, highlights of the things that we um, have work worked on in the past 18 months, um, building on work that we've been doing for the past few years, um, things like increasing um, active participation by states. We've seen some, some real um, uh, forward motion there, especially with um, things like the geospatial maturity assessment. Um, 
And we also, you know, I think we're able to take advantage of the fact that we, um, we did all of our pivoting so that we could have a lot of online programming. And that allowed some of the states who just traditionally can't physically make it to meetings to be able to um, plug in and, and be part of the discussions. And I think that that has been a great addition um, over the past 18 months or so. Um, in the advocacy and influence, you can see that that's kind of a mixed bag where when it comes to the colors there, there's, there's some green, there's some yellow, um, there's a little bit of red there. Um, what I would say about that is, um, first of all, it's, it, it's been really hard to travel. <laughs> so actually creating a um, hill day or a GIS day on the hill um, hasn't been feasible, but um, I think most of you are also aware that Cy Smith um, is joining our, um, our staff team and really going to be working on a lot of our advocacy initiatives. He's certainly someone who has a lot of personal influence in this, um, in this industry, in this area. Um, and so really looking forward to um, reporting back to you next year with a lot more green in this, um, in this area. I think it's going to take all of us. Um, so, you know, Cy is, it may be our, our ringleader in a sense, but, you know, it really um, is a, um, it's a team effort for sure um, when it comes to advocacy and influence. And, you know, there's certainly that uh, multiplier factor that we need to take advantage of. Um, about sponsorship, I will say I am just um, so incredibly grateful for the sponsors who have um, continued to work with us. You know, we've we've changed things around. We've we've tried to be creative and think outside the box and and think about how we can um, bring our sponsor community together with our um, our state members and federal members. But you know, I really just recognize that this has been um, incredibly disruptive when it comes to the expectations around the um, deliverables um, and opportunities involved in in sponsorship, and I think. Think that um, this has been a, a bit of an equalizer. It's been an opportunity for us to all come together, um, you know, on on similar platforms. Um, but also just recognizing that without our sponsors, um, from a financial perspective, we wouldn't be able to do what we do, and from a um, thought leadership perspective, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. So, um, just really want to, to acknowledge that there. Um, all of those initiatives, and they, they seem to grow um, <laughs> by the month, um, which, is, which is really great. And, you know, I think we're really, um, we've been able to do a lot of great work on all of these projects. Some of them are funded projects. Some of them are um, traditional NISJIC projects, things like the geospatial maturity assessment. Um, we have really um, I think, been able to dig in on the GIO Academy, and that's become a really powerful um, program for our, our state members. Um, Council of Councils Forum, which is one of the newer um, programs that we're doing, which is really taking a look at, um, we know that, that there's not a one-size-fits-all model for councils, but what can we do to help um, our, our states strengthen um, their, their uh, coordinating councils, and how can we make Make sure that we're plugged into um, the, the way that those councils are operating and prioritizing things. Um, and then, of course, the authoritative data for wayfinding is, um, has, has continued to be a hot topic. The National Address Database continued to be a hot topic. So, you know, I will say that we have been um, able to get a lot of work done um, through, through the Zoom. Um, in, in many of our initiative areas. Um, in terms of community, um, you know, I, I say we were, we were sort of uh, crawling towards a tipping point with my NISJIC before the pandemic, and then we didn't really have a choice. And so I think um, we are at a place with, with my NISJIC where we, we have um, really increased the usage and the utility. I think there's a lot more work to be done, um, a lot more opportunity there, but, you know, I, I'm really pleased with the um, level of 
participation we have there. Um, still working with the committee leaders and um, others to spark discussions within my NISJIC and, and really uh, sort of reach its full potential. Next slide. So conferences. <laughs> You know, we, we really set out to, um, to get the right people in the room. Um, I don't, when, we, when we wrote this, I don't think we imagined that the room wouldn't, wouldn't be with four walls um, necessarily, but um, we've really worked hard to bring as much content and as much um, interactivity as possible. I think that we have had some successes there. I think we have um, faced some challenges and, you know, it's really, again, a credit to you all as the participants for um, bringing it to life. Um, online programming, again, um, we were doing a little bit of it before the pandemic, and then we had to do a lot of it. And so we, I think, got pretty good at it. We've got some great um, numbers, great participation. I love watching the chat in some of these um, webinars and other programs. It is just um, really, really fun. Um, in the area of communications, you know, it's interesting. This is something that came up in the board um, strategic planning discussion earlier this week. I don't even know what day it was now. Um, but, you know, we, we have always done a good job of telling ourselves our stories. Um, and, and a lot of that is even one-on-one, -on -one, not even necessarily amplifying, amplifying it out to the whole community. And so here again, you know, lots and lots of opportunity. This is something, um, one of the things that Sai is going to be focusing on is really, um, building out a knowledge center, making sure we're capturing the, um, really worthwhile discussions that happen on my NISJIC and happen elsewhere so that we are, um, building a very useful, um, library of information that can be accessed um, as, as needed and, and can also be living in the sense that, um, you know, it can, can be updated and um, grow as, as we go. Um, administration, uh, we're, we're doing it. <laughs> um, the, the thing that I would mention is that that last uh, bullet point around increasing staff bandwidth. And um, if you could click to the next slide there. I just wanted to show you that this is our current um, staff team. And, you know, it's not a necessarily a traditional staff for a nonprofit organization our size, um, but it's a, an incredible group of people and, um, you know, every time you hear my name in in these um, these halls, it's really this group of people who are doing the the work to make it all possible, who are following up with you, who are collecting things, who are facilitating things. Um, you know, I, I want to call out specifically Jamie for her work um, as the the virtual, um, end of, of this conference planning staff. She's done an absolutely spectacular job. Um, Ashley and Amy and Emily, who are all new in their roles. This is their first NISJIC conference, and it's a doozy, and they're doing a great job, and uh, so happy to have Cy on board, so fortunate to have Linda and Phil working on 3DAP and um, elevation-derived hydrography, um, whatever we're calling it right now, um, but, you know, the, the data for the nation team. So just wanted to remind you, and also you may not be familiar with some of these faces, so I thought I'd give you another shot at it, but that's really where I'll leave it because I think that that's the, the strongest slide I can, I can possibly offer. Thanks. Thank you, Molly. That brings us to the end of our time on the agenda. So if I could have a motion to suspend our business meeting. I see, so moved, all in favor? Aye, right. okay, wonderful. And we'll pick up the business meeting on Thursday when we're on the agenda again, and that will start with committee reports. We will also have uh, more awards from the recognition committee at that time.